we against uh, a dredge deck? Okay, so I am glad that. Oh shit, that does it for both of us. Oh my god. <laughs> Hey, what is up guys, Murphy back for another video. Uh, today we are going to be playing Slivers. Um, pretty much an all-time uh, fan favourite. So we've got 20 lands, uh, pretty much everything taps for all the colours except Mute Vault. Um, but Mute Vault being Creature Land is great. We've got 8 1 drops and 4 Aether Vials. Um, for our 2 drops, we've got uh, however the fuck you say that with Predatory Sliver. Both just pump all your Slivers up. We're then playing Diffusion Sliver, which just makes it a little bit harder for our opponent to kill our creatures. And we're also playing for um, these as well, again, to basically do the same thing. Luckily, it's a changeling, so it still fits in with the theme. Um, we're playing four of the new Sliver, which uh, gives all of your creatures flying and haste. That is absolutely incredible for two mana. Uh, we're playing two Leeching Sliver just to get a little bit more damage in, and two uh, Two-Headed Slivers, again, to try and squeeze more damage in. We're playing four of the Opaline Sliver. So I chose to play this over the three mana red one that gives all your creatures plus one plus one if you have a swamp. Um, the reason for that is the deck is very hard to build a mana base for. Um, and I felt that if you start adding things like Verdant Catacombs, Overgrown Tombs and stuff like that, you're just going to get mana issues. So I thought this card is still a fantastic three drop. Whenever your opponent kills one of your guys, basically, um, you just get to draw a card so you can just play another one. So basically it's helping stop uh, mass removal decks. So that is the main deck, uh, and as I mentioned, the four Aether Vials. In the board, we've got four Ley Lines, a cha uh, Changeling uh, Colossus, just because it gets in a shitload of damage against Jund, two Harmonic Slivers for some pesky uh, artifacts and enchantments, four Siphoning Slivers, two Leeching Slivers, and two Dredge Slivers. Basically, a little bit more resilient, um, faster, better against racing. Um, that is the deck. Let's get into some games. So we're going to be going fast. Uh, our opening hand has... An eighth of our that we can't cast, and only one land. So we are going to mulligan that. Uh, this hand is a lot more land heavy, but we are going to ship one of those anyway. Um, and we've got, unfortunately, no one drop. We've got some uh, some good creatures anyway, so we'll keep this. Uh, and we'll get rid of, one of, yeah, we'll get rid of one of these. So we'll, um, what should we lead off with? We'll lead off with the ancient, um, at least it doesn't tell our opponent exactly what we're on and pass the turn. See what our opponent is up to. Oh, so we're playing against Tron. So this is where uh, our sideboard is going to be pretty handy, being able to increase the clock. Um, so we might as well lead up with the Predatory Sliver just because it's more aggressive. Uh, Actually, no, I guess this would be more aggressive. Uh, so we'll go with the Mutavolt here. Um, and we'll go into the Predatory Sliver. Uh, let's go green. Yeah, I think, I think it's pretty close with what you want to go with there. Between the Unsettled Marina or the Predatory Sliver. Uh, but I think it's better to get this in play first. Because next time we can play the Opaline Sliver if we want. Um, also... Depending on what we draw, we might want to start attacking with the Mute Vault soon. Our opponent's going to have turn 3 Tron. Um, yeah, so we'll play the uh, Sliver Hive. And then next turn what we'll do is we'll play this and attack with the Mute Vault. So it, we should have actually played the Marina over the Predatory Sliver, I think. Probably. Uh, so let's get in for 2. Uh, but I think this hand is just going to be too slow for against Tron, unfortunately. So we'll get into and main phase two. Uh, we'll get a blue and a white. Play the Opaline Sliver. Um, so depending on what they're going to ramp into here will help us determine if this is actually going to do anything. It'll probably get boarded out, to be honest, and... Uh, we'll play something else that's a little bit lower on the curve just to be able to get more damage in. They're going to crack the map here. So they've got the mine and the power plant. Uh, so they've just got the tower and that's going to be Tron assembled. Very strange that they've got mismatched Tron. <laughs> um, let's see what they're going to play. Hopefully not anything too aggressive. Oh, expedition map. Okay. Do they just not have anything to ramp into?
that would be really good for us. <laughs> so is there any creature lands or anything like that they can get with this? I don't think so. This is pretty much just get Tron and then yeah, so I don't know what, what uh, else they could have in the hand. It must just be more ways to do stuff. Oh, they're going to play Dismember. Uh, so we get to draw a card. And that was probably one of the best things we could have replaced it with. So basically just the same thing. And our opponent doesn't have a Khan or anything like that. So we got pretty lucky there. Um, we'll play the Unclaimed Territory here. We'll name Sliver. Um, and I guess we play both two drops. Uh, yeah, so we'll go uh, white and blue. Play the Marina here. Uh, and then we'll play the Sinnoh Sliver as well. Um, we could attack with the Mutavolt, but I think that it's better just to get as much on board as quickly as possible and then start attacking with the Mutavolt. So this way we can attack for three. Um, and pass the turn. So our opponent's going to go end of turn, crack the expedition map. Probably, oh, they're just going to do it now. Okay. Um, probably to get, where is it, the tower, which gives you three mana instead of getting the twos. Yeah, which they've done. And they've played a forest into Ancient Starings. Okay, so this is where they're probably going to find something to do. Hopefully it's not Ugin, and maybe it's something a little bit slower, like Khan. Khan would be a lot more reasonable. Worm Coil Engine, that one's pretty good. Uh, we have no main deck way of dealing with a um, Worm Coil. However, uh, it's not going to kill us right now. The life gain is annoying, but we can try and get around that. Okay, so we'll play the Cavern of Souls, naming Sliver. Um, how much does that cost? Is it five? One, two, three, four. Okay, so we're one mana short of using Sliver Hive to make a one one every turn. Obviously, not ideal, but it's better than nothing. Uh, yeah, so we'll play this uh, the Sliver, and then we'll play the flanking one as well. Um, we can't attack into this, of course. Uh, the, whatever damage we do, they'd end up gaining back anyway. So they'd end up blocking this, taking three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so they'd lose two life in total, but would lose a creature. Um, overall, I think we're just going to have to try and just wipe them out in one big turn. So they're effectively on, uh, like, what, 17? So if they block with this, basically they're going to go up to 17. So we would have to have three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Uh, so we're still six damage behind being able to one shot them. Um, so we're gonna have to assemble some damage pretty quickly. Another Sinnoh Sliver would be perfect. Uh, actually, we do have a flanking Sliver. So they're, they're actually on 16. Our opponent has got an incredibly slow draw, fortunately for us. Ooh, Blast Zone is pretty damn good. Um, so Blast Zone, uh, is pay three and sack it, destroy everything of a specific CMC. What's our opponent up to now? Maybe trying to ancient stirrings. Well, they've got two mana left. We'll see what they're up to. They're probably going to try and get this up to two counters um, because at the moment it only kills the sliver, one sliver. Uh, oh, okay, they're straight away going to just. Oh, okay, then they've put the counter on it, sure. So I think if we draw a two drop Lord, then we might be able to kill our opponent next turn. Uh, so whatever one they block with the worm coil, which would be a three power one, so we'll say this one, then they would take, so they gain five because of flanking, so they've got up to 16. Would do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So in theory, if we draw a lord this exact turn, we do actually have lethal. <laughs> the likelihood of it actually happening is pretty damn low, but we'll uh, hope for the best. 
Um, and because of Diffusion Sliver, plus... Oh, okay, they're just going to attack. What do we want to do? We can block or we can just take it. Um, because they've got the Blasting Zone to blow up next turn, I think our best bet is just to take the damage. Which again, if we draw a Lord, we still do have lethal. Hey, <laughs> nice and easy, sweet. Uh, so let's play Predatory Sliver here. Um, we've got enough between Diffusion Sliver and the Marina to actually have lethal. So, um, sorry, to get around the tower, even if they had this member. Um, we'll add one colorless. Sweet, and our opponent's conceded. Uh, on to sideboarding. We don't actually have a whole lot against Tron. Um, so we've got uh, two of the Dredgescape, which I think is probably just worth bringing in over um, a slower creature, as well as the Leeching ones. Uh, so these are very similar to our Lord. The toughness on our creatures isn't a whole uh, a lot of relevance. Um, Siphoning Sliver does very little for us here. Uh, Leyland the Void obviously is not much against Tron. So the Harmonic Sliver and the Colossus, are they worth bringing in? Um, so the Menace on our Slivers is not massively relevant. It's okay against um, Worm Coil Engine, but that's about it. I think the Leeching Sliver is pretty much uh, a must-have. What we want to cut for it is Probably the Opline Slivers um, for these four, just to bring our curve down and be more aggressive. Yes, we did draw a card from it last time, which was very fortunate, but again, it's a three drop. Um, where against Tron, their three drops are Khans and stuff like that, so it's very slow. The Harmonic Sliver, again, is good because it destroys artifacts, so it does blow up things like Worm Coil, but alternatively, um, th there are very few targets. So most of the rocks that they bring in, or sorry, not the rocks, like, um, chromatic sphere and stuff like that they just sacrifice them pretty quickly harmonic sliver not great against that however it does allow you to repeatedly blow up worm coil engine and their tokens so if they play worm coil you can play harmonic sliver blow it up next turn play another sliver block the one with lifelink or death touch whatever one you need to go for uh, but i think on the draw it is just going to be too slow so we're just going to play with uh, the lowest curve we can put together and hope that we get there before they they play on ugin or something like that uh, so we've got effectively two lords in the in this hand, so we'll keep. Uh, I, this one obviously isn't a lord, but in, in this matchup it is effectively. It just gives you one more damage each turn on each of your slivers. So we're going to go straight with an expedition map. Uh, we will go Cavern of Souls with Sliver uh, and pass the turn. So our opponents, oh, they are going to not have a, a turn three Tron. Looks like a turn four. Wait, what? Why are they playing Chromatic Sphere over cracking this? I guess they want to see what they find and then go get the third one. That makes sense. Uh, <laughs> of course, we draw our one drop now. Um, we'll play the Ziggurat. And uh, which one do we want to play first? Um... Let's go with the dredge scape. So black and white or whatever. Uh, so the reason we're leading off with this is because it has the most power. Next turn we're going to play a Lord and a Gale Rider anyway. Um, so we might as well lead off with the one with the most power. Yeah, so our opponent's got a very, very slow start, which has got me a little bit confused of why they would have kept their hand. If it only has one Tron piece and an Expedition map, Okay, so they're going to get it next turn. And we draw a Sliver Hive, which is a good draw. Uh, let's go... Let's get a Flying uh, Sliver, and we'll go with the Predatory as well. Um, I think. Is Leeching better? No, we'll go with Predatory. Uh, 
Uh, one thing to be worried about, I guess, is some sort of wrath. So they've got. Uh, I can't even remember what the Tron decks playing. Well, they used to play Pyroclasm. But I don't know if they still play that. So next turn we can attack for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that is going to start. I guess we've got like a two turn clock from now on. Assuming they can't wrath the board, which is fairly likely. Okay, so they're now going to go get uh, whatever they're missing, which is the power plant. This puts them up to five mana. Um, fortunately, five is not a number we're worried about. Seven and eight are the scary ones. So our opponent's going to crack the Chromatics Star, uh, getting a green mana, hoping for a uh, Ancient Stirrings. Ooh, into Thrag Tusk. So Thrag Tusk is okay uh, because it doesn't have flying, and all of our creatures do. So Thrag Tusk is basically gain five life and put us on a very slow clock, which we are fine with. So we're going to play another uh, land, play both of our creatures here. and just hope that our opponent doesn't have a board wipe. If they have a board wipe, we're in trouble. Um, but we will get to that when it happens. Uh, let's play this one. Sweet. So we're gonna get in for a shed load of damage here. Um, and we'll just pass the turn. Our opponent goes down to 12. Next turn we do have lethal. Uh, so they're going to have to have some sort of Ugin or something along those lines to be able to uh, bring this back, really. Well, that's a lot of mana. <laughs> they could be playing like an... Yeah, okay, now we possibly have lost. Still not necessarily dead, though. It's going to be very hard to bring it back. So they can minus for two. Um, yeah, so we lose our board. I think that's probably over. I can't imagine we can beat an Ugin now just because we're only drawing one card a turn. And they can just keep Uginning it. All of our creatures die to the Ugin, unfortunately, dealing three damage. Yeah. Okay, we'll just concede. Uh, there's no way we're going to be able to, to claw that back. Um, very well timed um, Wrath by our opponent. So what do we want to play uh, now that we're on the draw? I think we just play what we've been doing. Um, hope that we just get a very, very aggressive hand. Yeah, let's go with that. Again, we could bring in the Harmonic Sliver, but I don't think it's worth it. Uh, against Tron, I think it's more of like a Destroys and Snaring Bridge and stuff like that. Okay, this is perfect. So we've got a turn one eighth of our with lands that can actually cast it. We've got a Mutavolt, we've got Lords. We can't ask for much more than this. So our opponent is just deciding whether they want to keep their 7. This deck is a lot better than I was expecting. Pretty much to release a video every single day and not get bored of the same deck, so I'm having to pretty much find anything I can that's a different deck. Um, and Slivers was one that I haven't I haven't really played much Slivers. I've played it a little bit in the past and I just thought, why not, we'll play a bit of Slivers. I didn't expect it to be very good, but it's... Obviously our opponent's been unlucky with their draws, they've been quite s slow games, it's not like there's been turn three cards, but it's still reasonably okay, the, the deck that we've, we've um, been playing. Uh, so we will put the counter on top. And we draw another Aether Vile, that's probably not going to do much this game. Uh, we will lead off with, uh, it doesn't really make a difference between the two Lords, we'll go with the green one. And uh, God, Modo is really annoying to play with all these lands. Uh, and we'll pass the turn. Yeah, so next turn we can play the Sinnoh Sliver. Sinnoh? Sinnoh? I don't know how you say that. We can play that Sliver and tack for three. Uh, because we've got the two headed Sliver, a Worm Coiler, a Thrag Tusk, again, still is just not going to be much of an issue. It's it's still the Ugin, which is the, the really one that we're scared, scared about. 
Maybe playing something like Pithing Needle would be a good option against Tron then for us. Or Sorcerer's, Spy Sorcerer's Spyglass. So opponent uh, has got the mine and the tower. Oh no, they've got two. I thought that was another tower. They've got two mines. Okay, so they've got a real slow game again, which is again good for us. Um, yes, we will use Aether of Vile to go up again. Oh, perfect. So this turn uh, we will go um, play both of our creatures, which are going to increase our clock. So yes, we will do that and uh, black for leeching slither, and then with the last uh, mana, we might as well use Aether Val. So this turn we're going to get in for four, but next turn is when we're going to start getting in for a lot more damage. And because we've got eight of ours, it means that we're not going to have to keep using our mana, so our Mutavolt can start kicking in as well. So our opponent's going into Sylvan Scrying, so next turn they're going to have, like, what, eight mana? So that is going to be Ugin again, unfortunately. <laughs> Hopefully they won't have it. Okay, so the one on the right uh, we do want to use, and the one on the left we don't. So we'll play the Unclaimed Territory, again choose Sliver, uh, we will activate Mutavolt, get in for as much damage as we can, and hopefully our opponent doesn't have an Ugin. <laughs> uh, is that lethal? 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, shit, yeah that was lethal, okay sweet, so we've got a turn 4 uh, kill with um, slow it, and that was definitely not the fastest draw. Okay, sweet. Um, so I guess on to the next round. So again, we get to go on the play. Uh, one land is going to be an easy mulligan here. Uh, ooh, again, one land. Unfortunately, we are going to probably have to mulligan that. We do have two one drop. Sorry, three one drops. If we draw a land. We could get there. We've got some pretty good creatures. We've got the one that gives flying, and we've got the Lord, and a bit of protection. Because our deck works so poorly when we are low on cards. Because um, otherwise, we're just playing like two twos. If our opponent kills one, and we've mulliganed to five, we're we're pretty much out anyway. So I think we're going to keep this. Uh, put the diffusion sliver on the bottom, and we're just going to have to hope we draw a land. I don't think we can really go down to. Four five or something like that in this deck. Um, let's lead off with flying. And pass the turn. Yeah, so if we draw a land within the next two turns, I think we can still definitely win this. It just depends on uh, how long it takes for us to draw an additional land. Okay, so we're against Death Shadow by the look of it. Oh, maybe not. Uh, let's go with First strike. Uh, get in and pass the turn. So we're definitely against a blue black deck. What they're up to, because normally Death Shadow decks would have shocked the Watery Grave. Um, so it makes me think maybe they're playing like some sort of Esper control deck, or maybe just a blue black control deck without Death Shadow. So we're going to get in for a, a mere two damage, um, and we'll play a flanking sliver. Uh, I think they, it would have been nicer if they came up with uh, more intuitive names for the slivers. Like, Gale Rider Sliver is, I guess, logical, you know, you can work that out, but if they had just named this one Flanking Sliver and this one, actually, no, to be fair, Striking Sliver is good. <laughs> uh, 
and our opponents remanded our uh, one drop, which is absolutely fine. Uh, so they're playing blue, black, green. So they're playing Soul Tie. Uh, sweet. So we finally drew our additional land. Um, what do we want to do? Probably play the Diffusion Sliver, but I'm worried it's going to get countered. So I think the best thing to do first is to attack. Because uh, if they want to kill one of our creatures, they'll probably do it now. And then hopefully our Diffusion Sliver will be able to keep the rest of our Slivers alive for a while. Okay, so they are just going to take the two. Um, we'll play the Diffusion Sliver. I really hope it does survive, but I don't expect it to. Not against a control deck that's not used their mana. Once it resolves, though, it's going to be pretty hard for them to remove. Yeah, they can use Fatal Push, but three mana to Fatal Push something is not efficient for them. Okay, so they're going to use Archmage's Charm, which is counter a spell. So it does look like our opponent is on quite a, uh, a more grindy version of a control deck, not like a Grixis Shadow deck. So uh, that that is definitely more beneficial for us. At least game one it is. Uh, so we drew Aether Vile, which is perfect against the Countless Magic deck. So we're going to go ahead and play Aether Vile. It's uh, so unfortunate that we uh, drew it just after playing the Diffusion Sliver, because once you've resolved the Diffusion Sliver, it's so good. Um, yeah, so we'll get in for two damage here. However, our opponent did allow this to re resolve, so they might just be out of Counter Magic now. Um, or they've only got things like Remand, which aren't going to be very good in this situation. Uh, and we are going to play a Flanking Sliver now. Uh, again, if they do have a Remand, they might just use it now, which they didn't, so they probably don't have a Remand. I think they would just use it there just to, just to cycle and slow us down, so they're going to grow Spiral here into another Watery Grave, and they're just going to play it tapped. Sure. So I think they're going to be playing the uh, Soul Tie um, Turns deck. If that is the case, we might have to bring in Harmonic Sliver just to blow up um, the uh, enchantment that untaps all their lands at the beginning of their end step. Oh, so they're playing Creeping, uh, creeping Tar Pit. So with Aether Vial, of course, we're going to tick up. Uh, we drew Sliver Hive, which is a good draw. And I think here, we probably just want to activate the Mute Vault and Swing. I don't really want to play the Predatory Sliver now. In case they have something like, uh, well, I guess we could play it now. Maybe we'll lead off with the Leeching Sliver. Um, black and colorless, play the leeching sliver. See if this one resolves. It's annoying that we have to play these main phase one because um, if we got to play the main phase two, we wouldn't be able to get cryptic to counter it and tap all our creatures down. So our opponent is very much in the tank. Uh, oh, okay, we get to attack. I was expecting some sort of cryptic tap on my creatures, draw a card or something. So we're going to get in for quite a lot of damage here. They might even just have like a snapcaster with something. Okay, they're just going to take all the damage. And then end of turn, they're going to mystical teachings. For cryptic command, okay. So this is where the two drop with haste would be amazing with Aether Vile, because then when they go tap all your creatures, in response we can activate Aether Vile, play a creature with haste, and then our slivers that we've Aether Vile'd in, uh, oh no, because they'd have to do it after. I don't know how that works actually. So if our opponent goes cryptic at the beginning of our combat, um, and I didn't want to play that at the end of the turn because I'd rather play around a board life at this point when they're only on four uh, we know we're going to not get any damage in this turn uh, so we will use it to be able to flash in the predatory if we need to 
as liver. Okay, so how is this going to work? If our opponent cryptics, do we get another chance before declaring attackers to activate our mutavolt? So if that resolves, I'd now like to, yes we can. So we activate Mutavolt here. We can then flash in the Predatory Sliver um, and that will be four damage. Because we've got the one from the Leeching Sliver and then three from Mutavolt. Oh, they've got Assassin's Trophy. That's no fun. Um, we don't have a basic, uh, I don't think. No, we don't. <laughs> So that just kills our mutavolt, uh, and I think we just pass. Again, there's not much point in playing a, another creature, just because we've got enough on board to be lethal. Um, the only thing I can think of is the, oh, what have they done? And it's going to go for another cryptic. Okay, so they're just going to grind us out with cryptic commands at the moment. What they can do is tap everything down and then uh where is it um so return target permanent to his owner's hand so they can just return this to their hand and just use cryptic again and again and again so we're going to leave eighth of our on two and we drew a gale rider which is fine uh so now our opponent's going to tap everything down If I were them, I'd probably be looking at tapping and bouncing that because that's effectively a lock for us, but it doesn't look like they want to do that. Uh, and yeah, we'll just pass here. So even if they do have like a damnation, we can still get around it. But judging by the fact that with mystical teachings, um, oh, okay, to be fair, it's only instances. Uh, sure, they can kill that, that's not a problem. I think they're definitely better off cryptic in bouncing this and then returning cryptic back because instead of drawing a card, why not just get another cryptic command? That seems way better than just drawing a random card. Because you still get um, you still get to be able to uh, basically just tap us out every single turn. I guess because it puts on top of your deck, you're not doing anything. You're only just tapping us down for a turn. So maybe that's why they're doing it. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll go with Sliver. Hopefully that won't matter. It probably will. But uh, what is done is done now. They've got another cryptic command here, tap and draw, sure. So main phase two, we are going to play another creature just to make sure that we can uh, get lethal without overextending too much. We're going to go in with another Gale Rider, um, because that way if they fatal push one, uh, they can't then block with their, their creeping tar pit next turn. Like if, they, if we attack with everything and then they go fatal push kill this, all of a sudden the rest of our creatures lose flying. So if we've got two in play, it just makes it a little bit less likely that's going to happen. Yes, we do have first strike and, and flanking, so it will kill the creeping tar pit, but what's more important is actually killing our opponent instead of just letting them buy uh, turns every time. So our opponent is Mystical Teachings for another instant, which will probably be another cryptic command at this point. Yep. So they are buying themselves a lot of time. So we'll play the Sliver Hive. Uh, we are one land off being able to do Sliver Hive every turn. So we're going to start combat. Uh, opponent's going to tap everything down and draw another card. Uh, yes. And they must be getting close to whatever combo they're doing. I think it is um, Woodless Reclamation untap all your lands and then use uh, the instant speed, take an extra turn and just do that over and over and over. 
But that's the only thing I can think of at least. That's a lot of mana. Okay, so they're going to flash back the other one. What are they going to get here? Is that a fourth cryptic? So we're drawing a Cavern of Souls, which is good. It gets around counter magic. Um, so here, obviously, everything's going to get tapped down. And then I think we're going to just start making 1-1s one at the end of each turn. There's not much point in playing anything else on the board. Uh, oh, we did already have a Cavern of Souls, so our creatures are uncounterable, I guess. But we're more worried about... Um, board wipes than we are spot removal at this point. Spot removal is not too much of an issue. Uh, yeah, so things like that, it's just, that doesn't really matter. Especially now that we've got two Gale Rider Slivers, um, the Creeping Tar Pit's probably not gonna be able to block anything. So they're gonna grow Spiral, really looking through their deck. They're over halfway through their deck at this point. <laughs> just another land which probably can go fetch another Mystic Sanctuary, which is going to be another Cryptic Command, I expect. To be fair, if we have no way of dealing with the Cryptic Command combo with um, the Mystic Sanctuary, in theory, they can just play it every single time, put Cryptic back on top of their deck, tap all our creatures down. If that's the only way we can win, then they could just mill us out. It would take literally 45 turns but that actually could be um, something if they needed to. Probably something you'd have to do more in real life than you would on Modo. Uh, so they're gonna get in for the three here because why not? And then they're gonna untap and probably just start taking extra turns at this point. And we're going to make a 1-1 sliver. Oh, we can't. Because of... Uh, Ziggurat is only for creature spells. This is not a creature spell. So we can't do the sliver hive every turn yet. So our friend's going to untap. And... Oh, we do actually get to have another turn. So we have to kill them pretty soon. <laughs> uh, another predatory sliver. So... Yeah, at this point we're just going to go for it. So, Cavern of Souls for green and Sliver Hive. We're just going to play both out and swing. Sweet, so we actually got there in the end. They must have just not drawn um, the Take Extra Turn card. So that was very fortunate for us. Harmonic Sliver does blow that up. Um, what else have we got? So Leyline of the Void does shut off Mystical Teachings and it does shut off the land that went into the battlefield putting it into the sorcery back on top of your deck. But I don't think that's worth a card to us. Obviously that game it would have been, but overall I don't think it is worth it. So we definitely want Leeching Sliver just to increase the clock. Um, Two-Headed Sliver does virtually nothing, being that they don't have any creatures to block other than Creeping Tar Pit from what I've seen. Uh, Opaline Sliver is fine because they're quite a grindy deck. I think the uh, Colossus might be worth playing as well. So it's got protection from black uh, and it you can just pump it up as big as you can spend mana on it. Uh, oh, we probably want the Dredge Scape Sliver as well, just in case they do bring in removal. But what do we take out? That's the hard part. Maybe we take out Opaline Sliver for the dredge scape. Not sure really. So 
so this is better for grinding uh, long term this is more of like I guess they both do very similar things except this is quicker to play so we're gonna go by that basis and hope that this is better I can see bringing in the chameleon colossus but I think we just need to kill our opponent as quickly as possible instead of trying to go grindy like grindy is good against Jund but where your opponent's grindy is I've got so many lands in play and I can just take extra turns grinding doesn't all of a sudden work very well uh, we will keep this uh, normally I wouldn't want to keep a one land hand but because we've got cavern into Aethervar with two one drops we've got two turns to draw a land and if we do we've got our best two drop in, in the deck uh, so yeah we'll go cavern of souls choose sliver uh, into Aethervar uh, yes we do miss out on playing a, one, a turn one creature but the amount of mana you're going to net from it late, uh, later on in other turns is just incredible so definitely worth playing also it plays around counter magic so the key is use Aether Vile to play our best slivers and then play our shitty ones off our actual mana. And yes, we do want to use Aether Vile's ability. <laughs> we draw another Aether Vile. So more than happy just to play another one of these instead of another one drop. Um, literally just because that way we can play around their counter magic very efficiently. So it does mean this game is probably going to be a lot quicker than normal just because their charms which is like the blue 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 counter a spell gain control of a one cmc creature or draw two cards it's pretty much always going to be draw two cards now so we'll activate eighth of our uh, stick in let's start with a striking sliver so if they want to remove it that is uh hopefully gonna make them choose that so So the first one we do want to put a counter on, second one, yeah we will do it as well actually. And we drew our second land, okay so this hand is very very good, we've also got cavern so basically counter spells are just uh, not even going to do anything this game. So we're going to go activate this, put in a Gale Rider Sliver, uh, activate this one put in the Cloud Shredder Sliver, and then we're gonna pay two to put in Leeching Sliver. And because these all have haste, they're all gonna swing, and assuming they don't have a Fatal Push, which they don't, we are gonna get in for a shed load of damage. Um, and yeah, so our opponent's gonna have to draw removal pretty quick now. Okay, so I'm just gonna go straight into Wilderless Reclamation, which is fine doesn't do a whole lot against us to be honest it does allow them to be able to use draw spells during their turn and then interaction during our turn uh, both of these we we are going to leave on what they're on and mutavolt is quite nice here because it still gets the haste so I'm gonna see if our opponent wants to cryptic first, which they don't. So now I'm gonna put in the other creatures. Um, we could try and play around removal, but I think it's better off just playing everything we have. Because I think this is lethal actually. They're gonna have to kill the leeching sliver here really. If they don't, I think that is lethal. Uh, yeah, that will be. So unless they have a fog, which again, we'll still kill them next time because we've got the leeching sliver. I can't see a way of them getting out of this. So, okay. What have they got? Nothing, okay, sweet. Um, I wasn't expecting to get two wins out of this deck, let alone the first two games that we play. Uh, on to the next one. Okay, so with this hand we are very limited on mana, but we do have the Aether Vial. So it's going to be a very, very slow game. Um, but it's going to be very hard for them to interact with us as well, to be fair. So we've got two Diffusion Slivers and an Unsettled Marina. So between those, it's very hard for them to kill anything of ours but it's a very slow hand, so I think that's a mulligan. If we drew another land, that would have actually been pretty good, but I think that's gonna have to be a mulligan, unfortunately. 
So we're definitely going to keep this. The question is, what are we going to get rid of? Um, as much as I hate to say, I think it's going to be Aether Val. What are we against? Uh, a dredge deck. Okay. So I am glad that. Oh shit, that does it for both of us. Oh my god. <laughs> We've just lost um, both of our lands that allow us to actually play our spells. And this is not a dredge deck. Um, this is the Hollowed One deck. Um, fortunately, we've drawn an Aether Vial. Thank God for that. Uh, so we are still in the game, fortunately. not. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I absolutely love um, cards that do stuff like this. It's just ridiculous that both players do it. And you could just... You can literally put someone out of the game just by making them discard their lands. Alternatively, you can also put someone back into the game if they have no lands. Uh, so they're going to do Goblin Law here as well. So I'm expecting some Hollowed Ones. I'm definitely going to have to play this deck again. Um, seeing our opponent do this has reminded me how much fun this deck is. <laughs> um, yes, we do want to use that. Um, we did draw another land. Not that it does anything. Um, but at least we get to chip in for one here. Sorry, for two here. Uh, yeah, so we'll get in for two and pass the turn. At the end of their turn, we'll flash in a Gout Rider Sliver. There's no reason to play it now. It's not like they're going to have a blocker. Uh, and then we'll pass the turn back to them. Um... What mountain is that? I don't recognise that one. So, so end of turn, of course, we will uh, chuck in our one drop. It would be nice to see if we could draw a land at this point um, that's actually going to let us cast our spells, but to be fair, Aether Vile is going to be able to let us put cards in anyway. Okay, there we go. That's, that's actually something that we wanted to draw. So let's go green and colourless for a predatory sliver uh, and then we're gonna flash in a cloud shredder and attack they're gonna lightning axe that sure what are they discarding the conscripts yeah so they are playing the deck so the if I show you up here Storm Harrow says whenever it attacks, um, you may bring any auras back from your from your graveyard equipped to it. Eldrazi Conscripts gives it plus 10, plus 10, and Annihilator 2. So it basically just gives you a ridiculous creature. Um, doesn't make a difference which one we play. So if we play Predatory, we get in for two. If we play Cloud Shredder, we also get in for two. Um, I think we're better off playing Cloud Shredder, but I don't think there's much of a difference really. So our opponent's only down to three cards now. Um, let's see what else they've got. And they've got it, Jesus Christ. Uh, Oh, sorry, it's when it enters the battlefield, they get the plus 10, plus 10, and Annihilator 2. <laughs> uh, so we have to kill them uh, pretty much next turn. Does it have Trample? Yes, it does. Okay, so we're going to have to sacrifice two permanents, which is going to be a... Wait, can we kill them next turn if we play Predatory Sliver? So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No. So if we drew a land, that would not be lethal. Um, I think it's probably best to get rid of the two mutavolts. Maybe the ancient. Yeah, we'll go the ancient ziggurat actually. So we're gonna take the damage here. Uh, harmonic sliver is. Ah, it goes. Where does it go? 
When it enters the battlefield, return any number of auras cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures you control. Exile those auras at the beginning of your next end step. If those auras would leave the battlefield, exile them instead. Okay, so it's gone now. Ah, that's fine then. I did not realise that it went. And for fuck's sake, if I knew that, I would have kept the Ancient Ziggurat. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. So we will flash in uh, our Predatory Sliver. Um, we're going to attack. And we have lethal next turn, um, but we'll see what our opponent's up to. If they have another one. Uh, okay, that's fine. Oh, what does the ox do? So it's got escape for two red. It comes back as a, where, how many counters? With a 1-1 one, one counter, so it'd be a 5-3. Oh, but it does draw you three cards, okay. Uh, so we, if we draw a land, we have lethal next turn, assuming they don't have removal. Uh, Oh no, we can just tick up Oak Line and then, uh, sorry, tick up Eighth of Isle, flash in the Oak Line, and that's four in the air. So, yes. Um, and then tap that to play uh, Oak Line Sliver, and then that's four in the air. So, as long as they don't have a removal spell, we have lethal. And if they have a removal spell, then they win. Sweet. Um, yeah, their deck is basically just a budget version of uh, of the deck that we just played um, through the breach. It's a it's a pretty sweet version though, to be fair. So harmonic sliver does give us the ability to uh, aether vial in um, to blow up Eldrazi conscripts. Other than that, um, I'm not sure what we want to do. We can again we can increase our clock. Uh, they don't seem to have too much removal, so they've got lightning bolts and lava axes. So I'm not sure how much we want opline. Uh, two headed again doesn't seem great. I think those might have just been better off being leeching slivers. Uh, harmonic sliver does seem a little bit niche because you'd have to aether violet in to be able to stop the conscript, but it does stop the best thing they can do in their deck. Uh, Leyline seems like a pretty obvious inclusion. Um, yeah, so I think what we want to do is we need to cut something. I think the Oak Lines um, might actually just be good enough. I don't think the Harmonic Slivers are because we've got the Ley Line and you'd have to Aether Violet in to do anything. Um, so we're going to have to cut something, probably the Leeching Sliver. Yeah, let's go with that. So they're going to have to have removal for the ley line or have some other wacky combo in their sideboard. I still think they are a hollow one deck, so they're, they're probably still playing hollowed one and other things of that nature. This hand is way too slow. We're going to mulligan that. Um, sure, we'll keep this. Uh, so we've got a couple of one drops into couple of two drops and a three drop there's something we need to get rid of and it's probably the flanking sliver yeah so our opponent's going to get to go first of course and i really hope that they don't burning inquiry again inquiry yeah okay of course they do um <laughs> so we lose our anthem sliver our lord and one of our sliver hives luckily we draw a mutable and a infusion sliver and the ley line of the void. <laughs> um, so let's go unclaimed territory, name sliver, and let's play a gale ride. Uh, and uh, pass the turn. So this ley line may get stuck in a hand for now, but if we're lucky, we might be able to discard it to a burning inquiry later. Uh, so they've actually got their flame blade adept, which is secretly one of the best cards in that deck. Um, if you discard like five cards, you hit in for a shitload of damage with that thing. Uh, it is actually a lot better than it looks. Uh, we're going to lead into Diffusion. 
it is slower than the predatory um, but it just means that we should be able to keep flying for quite a while now it is worth noting because it just counters it they can still uh, lightning axe to put things in their graveyard so if they have an Eldrazi Conscripts, it's not like Thalia where they wouldn't be able to cast it. Um, oh god, they are going to do it again. And of course we keep the Leyland of the Void in our hand. And we now have two Oakline Slivers that we can't cast. Uh, this game is a mess. Oh, they do have a Flame Wake Phoenix as well. So I do think they, they just had a really, really unlucky game last turn. Uh, so they had Flame Wake, they can trigger if they'd like, which looks like they're going to. Uh, I think this has to attack each turn, doesn't it? Yeah, it does have to attack, so they can't keep it back as a blocker. Uh, and unfortunately there is no way we can cast these Ley Lines, and we draw another one. Uh, let's go red, play a Striking Sliver, um, and I think we're just going to attack for one and then keep back the others as blockers. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, the Diffusion Sliver is the most important one, I think. So we're going to swing in with one. We're going to keep back the other two to block anything if they attack. Um, yeah. Between First Strike, Flying, and having... Uh, the protection of the additional two mana it does mean that we are able to offer blocks however if they do want they could just kill something now so if they had now that they have, we know they have the third land it does put me off they could just be bluffing though to be fair i don't know if we can risk it though uh normally i wouldn't but i think between having double a line and two cards in a hand that we can't cast kind of makes me want to try it no no, we're not going to. If we get an opline in play, we're going to be much better off in this one for one exchange. Uh, so I'm going to try and try and go down that route. Um, hopefully, we'll draw another land and not a ley line. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, so we'll play that. Um, we get to stick an opline sliver into play. So now, if they have removal, they'll have to use it now. I guess we'll see that if they had a bluff now. And I have no idea what the artwork in, in this sliver is. Like, that is one of the weirder ones. The artwork for that reminds me of the film Annihilation. If you've seen the ending of Annihilation, uh, you might be able to see what I mean. Is that's, that reminds me of that. If you haven't seen Annihilation and you want to see a really, like, really weird ending to a film, definitely recommend watching that. Um, I'm not going to say how it finishes, of course. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's a, it's a fucking weird film. <laughs> So they are going to bolt our first striker in response, which is fine. Um, now we are going to have to, I th think, attempt to race. Um, I don't know. So we could try to double block this and then try and race from that. Maybe that's what we want to do. Because now we've got the opine sliver, we, they can't one for one us with burn spells. Oh, this actually could work out really well for us. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so, yes, we did draw a third ley line, but we managed to only discard one of the three in our hand. So it's a... Okay. Uh, and unfortunately, we lost our other Oakline Sliver. So this game has been an absolute roller coaster. Uh, I definitely want to start playing with this card. This card is, uh, is absolutely awesome. It just leads to some fun, to some fun games. Uh, they're going to bring back the Ox, discard the hand, and draw three cards. Yeah, this this deck is sweet. I am fairly sure tomorrow's video will be on uh, this mono red deck. Uh, oh, by the way, if you if you are new to the channel, uh, at the moment I am doing a uh, a video every single day where I play a deck. So today is slivers, of course. Um, uh, yeah, do we want to make this trade? I think we're going to have to. Okay. Uh, yeah, so today's uh, Slivers, there is a playlist on my channel with each day individually. Um, uh, we've played some pretty stupid decks. We've had some turn three wins with a couple of different decks, actually. So if you do like 
aggressive decks which are a little bit stupid, then by all means check out the other videos. Uh, we'll play the Unclaimed Territory. Again, name Sliver. Uh, we'll pay a blue to play the Gale Rider. And we will pass. I, there is absolutely no way we can cast these Ley Lines unless our opponent decides to give us an Urborg. Um, that's pretty much the only way we can do it. I, it possibly might have been better to attack there. Okay, this is perfect. This could easily get us back into this game. We've managed to draw all four of our ley lines. Um, <laughs> fortunately, we've managed to get rid of three. But it's been pretty crazy that we've drawn all three, four ley lines. Sorry, all four ley lines um, in... Oh, God. You know what? Let's call that one game. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, our opponent absolutely destroyed us that time. So I think we're just going to run that back and hope for the best. Our opponent has uh, now known that we've got Ley Lines, so they could bring in some removal for it. But I'm not sure there's that much removal that Red has. So they've got Ancient Grudge, but that's only artifacts. Uh, yes, we definitely want to play first. Um, this hand we're going to mulligan. This hand we will keep. So I'm going to lead off with the cavern. Um, just because I want to make sure that I have any lands that tap for multiple colours of mana straight away. Because we could just lose them to Burning Inquiry. Uh, I think we get rid of an Oakline Sliver. It's pretty close though. Um, Yeah, I think so. So we're gonna go cavernous souls. Um, <coughs> name sliver, and pass the turn. If our opponent does burning inquiry, at least we have uh, a cavern in play. So we should be able to play our spells a little bit easier than uh, we did in the other game. Yeah, which they are going to. Let's see what we get. So we discard a ley line, which was very lucky, and okay, that's absolutely fine. Uh, here we're going to play two one drops. So we're going to go Gale Rider and um, Striking Sliver. Uh, red. The reason I want to do this is I want to just get some power on board because um, the amount of the game is just changing every turn with burning inquiries. It's hard to gauge what you want to do, but I think getting some creatures on board is, is a good first step. So now we've got Oakline Sliver if we want to try and play around removal, as well as Diffusion Sliver, and we've got Sinnoh to pump up our guys a little bit. Okay, so our opponent's got a Lightning Bolt. Um, which is fine and do that again okay sweet um, we can play all of our spells what has our opponent got they've got the ox to flash back which is going to be a bit of a concern um, and the phoenix from the ox as well uh, eighth of our is pretty much dead at this point so we're just going to pay two to play the diffusion sliver uh, play the Gale Ride Sliver and hope that things don't change too much. Um, next turn they can add quite a significant amount to the board. So if they just play a mountain, uh, bring back the Ox, bring back the uh, Phoenix, we are going to start to be in trouble. Um, we're going to need to draw uh, a Lord at some point um, to be able to keep up because even the phoenix in the air is just going to get annoying. Fortunately, it is uh, one that has to attack each turn, so they can't use it as a blocker. But if they're playing an ox and that, that's like, what, seven power to the board? No, six, uh, eight power to the board. Our opponent's decided to do nothing, which is a bit odd. Uh, let's just go activate our mutavolt, and we're going to swing in with everything.
So if our opponent has a removal spell, uh, that might be why they've kept up three mana, because I find it strange they didn't just use the ox. I get that they'd lose cards um, in their hand, but the amount of power they'd add, it'd add, it changed the speed of the game so drastically, it might be worth it for them. It depends on what we have in hand. If they knew what we had in hand, they probably would have done it. But if these were two, like, Lords, then obviously they're, they're going to die very quickly, so it might have been better off to keep the removal. Okay, so they're going to decide to Lightning Axe, uh, discarding another Ox, and of course paying the two mana so it doesn't get countered. They're going to take four, going down to 12. We're going to play a Striking Sliver, and I think we just have to hope we draw uh, a Lord very, very soon. Because if our opponent flash. Uh, flashes, sorry, not flashbacks, escapes a ox next turn. They're adding uh, five and six, seven man, sorry, six, seven power on the board, and that's going to be very, very difficult for us to race. I really like the addition of the Storm Herald in this deck. It's, I don't think it's very good, but it's really sweet. So, yeah, now combat is going to begin sooner or later it will. So they're going to bring back the Phoenix. The Phoenix is going to chip in for two. Um, however, that's a good point. We do have First Strike. Oh, they didn't bring it back. So they've got a removal spell they want to use. Um, I am happy to find out what that is. No, I'm not, because if it's... Fl uh, <laughs> if it is... Um, Lightning Bolt, they kill our Flyer, they then are able to block with their Ox as well. So they definitely have something here. Uh, so we are just going to play the side uh, Winder, Winder, whatever it is. And I think we just attack with the Mute Vault. So if we attack with the Mute Vault, the only, way, only thing they can block it, well they can't block it unless they Bolt this. But if that's the case then it would die, uh, the Ox would die, so that's fine. So yeah, we can get in two damage. Um, but the only reason they wouldn't bring back the Phoenix here is if they have a removal spell, which they did have. Yeah, so now they can block, but the flanking will mean these trade, which I am happy to do. Unfortunately, our opponent isn't. So we do have three creatures with first strike, which means the ox can't even attack us at the moment. It's very risky if we do triple block though, because if they do have removal, we lose absolutely everything. So they're gonna bring back the other ox, discard their hand and draw three more cards. A flame blade and a land, sure. So they have got a two turn clock if they, oh, okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so them deciding to attack does suggest to me that they have um, some sort of removal. However, I do kind of want to call them out on their bluff and see if they don't. If they do have removal, it's going to be burn based, which means if we draw a creature next, yeah, I'm, fuck it, we're gonna we're gonna block everything. I I expect them to have some sort of removal, um, but I'm gonna call them out on it because I think we've lost either way, and I would really like to see uh, if they have it or not. Yeah, sure, I think that's game. Um, thanks for watching. Um, that is the third round fifth round sorry yeah that is all five rounds um i'll put whatever best three games were there uh thanks for watching and peace